This is a special episode by Camo. The ultimate deck podcast. Need a show about outdoor living? This is where it's at with your host, Shane Chapman and Wayla Brent. Thank you for tuning in. Now let the show begin. Yeah, yeah. The ultimate deck podcast. Let's go. Well, Wade, we made it. We made it. <laughs> with it some was, trying. It was a bit of an episode to get down here. Um, where are we? And we'll save that story for another day. Uh, Mount Pleasant, Texas. You've been before? It's first time for me. First time for you? Last like I was time? here yesterday. Yeah. If somebody uh, it would have be told the last me. time, I don't think. Like, I don't have any plans to come down here again, but... No, you don't remember what you did last night. They won't let you back. <laughs> it's over That's for you. That's not true. It was super, like, low-key last night for me. It was really good. I was fairly impressed that you ended up in bed at the same time as uh, me. Most same people. bed, even. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hey, we had to spend an extra night in hotels and uh, car rental was lots. Let's just share a bed. Yeah. So we got here, and they had canceled our hotel oh, rooms, too, man. just to be, like, the last event in what was a tumultuous two days of travel we get here and we're like we're here to check in finally they're like well you don't have rooms yeah of course you don't see you later <laughs> so what do you have for rooms well we have three okay three or four it is yeah Shane and i'll share a room the other guys <laughs> yeah. can they can have their own yeah so. nice. but, but it was fantastic they gave us like one of their like accessibility handicap rooms whatever there was like there was some leg room in there so like it was easily 10 feet between the beds. Yeah. We could have just brought in four more cots and everybody could have stayed with us. It was so. fantastic. Anyways, yeah. we're down here. We've talked about it a little bit before, you know, in the last couple of episodes about we were heading to Texas. It was going to be great. We were going to this, I called it a steel versus steel event. They tell me it's more collaborative than that, but I don't believe them. And now that I'm here, I extra don't believe them. Uh, but <laughs> steel sharpened steel event down in Mount Pleasant, Texas at Extreme Backyard and... What is this place called? Extreme oh, Backyard and beyond. and beyond. That was it. Yeah, I knew there was more to it. And uh, it's been fantastic so far. We got to the party a little bit late, but things yeah. are flying here. There's lots of people and uh, lots of vendors, lots of contractors, lots of action happening here. So it's been fun. Yeah. But today we've got a couple of gentlemen from National Nail, the Camo Division of National Nail, with us to talk about Camo and some of your products and your going ons and you know maybe your travel tips. If you could share <laughs> how you make that going. go smoother with us. <laughs> yeah. We've got James Gunning, the gunner, the national sales director at Camo, as well as uh, Greg Grubachman. And <laughs> uh, nailed it. Yeah, that was, that was it, right? You used all of the letters except for the ones that are actually in my name on that. Uh, Gruenhout, is that how right, we're saying that, that today? Correct, yeah. Well, that, that'll work yeah. for this morning. Product manager at Camo. So welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for having us. How, Thanks. like, I honest, I'm actually curious. How was your, how was your trip uh, down here? <laughs> My trip was fantastic. I had no snafus, um, but James had a bit of a, a bit of an issue. So yeah, mine was a little uh, eventful as well. I um, my wife jinxed it right from the beginning when she said, "I'm surprised you're not taking the first flight out this morning," and I'm like, oh, "I'll be fine." And uh, I flight got, got delayed. I travel all the time. <laughs> Ended up getting canceled, so I went back home that day and uh, got up first thing in the morning and tried it a day later. So. And that worked for you. Finally made it. So I was a little late. Didn't didn't get here for the Monday uh, dinner, but uh, made it here Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, that sounds like the story for yeah. half the people here yeah. is like, when did you get here? Uh, it's a couple hours ago, actually. And we're yeah. leaving tonight. We were so. pretty grumpy that we had missed the start of it as well. But then as we're like stuck in the airport or trying to get down here, we're, we're in a group chat with a bunch of different people. And it's like, this flight was canceled. And this guy's flight was yeah. canceled. And this guy's now driving. And I was like, okay, well... We're not the only ones, right? Kind of yes. everybody's story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So you guys wanted to be part of this event. This, like, like Ashley, the owner of Extreme Backyard and Beyond, is he's not, he's not just a steel guy. There's some wood decks going in here as well. But the event is really focused around these two steel frame options from Newcastle Steel and Fortress Evolution Steel framing. And there's a lot of curiosity because it's kind of gaining traction in the market a little bit. There's been, and, and also Newcastle, you know, they just, they purchased that product and they've made some changes from where, from what it used to be. And people are curious, well, like, what does it look like now? And how does it compare to the other system? And there's not really been an event or a place where you could kind of compare them side by side yet. So this has yeah. been fantastic because from the ground up, the time that the first bolt goes into the concrete out there, you can see how these two systems come together and then evaluate and they're 14 feet from each other so if you're like well right. this looks kind of funny oh i like this one better oh whatever i mean the, i mean they're both they're sharpening each other here is what's actually <laughs> happening <laughs> um so that's been fantastic camo has kind of been i would say a integral piece of the adoption of the steel framing because 
one of the most common questions we get as stocking dealers of Fortress Evolutions Framing is, yeah. okay, cool, but like, but how do we get a faster for it? Put it's it like, down. Yeah, uh, sure. Well, it's yeah. these ones. On the yeah. show. <laughs> this is also available, and it works great with this system. And and so you guys kind of were there for that, right, right. when the right, right when steel started to pick up steam. So tell us a bit about the Camo X Metal Faster. And yeah. That. So so our Edge Clip system launched uh, a few years ago now. So we're in our third season, I believe, with with the Edge Clip system. And one of the first things that we did with that clip system is made it available to alternative substructure. Right. So for the steel framing that's going in we have a specific screw a self-drilling screw for that same clip so you get the same fast you know easy installation strong holding power that you get with the whole edge clip system in the edge x metal clip and so that was important for us we thought and as we looked out at steel framing and what was going on in the marketplace and we're seeing the growth there was it was really a place where we wanted to lead and help people build better and so that's uh, that was our whole initiative. And Fortress has been, you know, outstanding uh, in support of our fastener and letting people know this is the way to go. If you're putting decking down, and we don't even care what kind of decking is going down. It doesn't have to be Fortress. It can be any kind of decking, right? But if you're using you, our you frame, don't care. Well, you know, I think they, they, one of the nice things about them, they obviously care about their decking brand, but they, but they wanted they wanted the experience to be great no matter what was going on their framing, right? So. Yeah. That was one of the first things that they kind of pushed out. And so been a great partner for us in growing that together um, as, a, uh, as a steel frame fastener. So it's been awesome. I think it's awesome because um, the reason that Fortress Evolution looks the way it looks is that they really tried to replicate the experience of installing wood. They didn't want it to feel too different for carpenters who are generally working with wood to be able to kind of like grab it, figure it out, and go. Hence the full just, tube steel, like it feels like a two by six and everything Yeah, it just else, opens right? up a whole market of people that are typically used to working with wood, right? Yeah. And so the nice thing is that you guys, your clip is like, aside from the threading right. and the cutter on the screw, right. is exactly the same as the clips that they're using already, which they fell That's in right. love with a couple of years ago anyway. Yes. They're already using it. Their existing tools work with it. It's like... It right. takes us an extra half second to start the clip or screw, but that's the only difference. Yeah, I think, uh, and a lot of the guys that have come down here are, are here to learn about moving their business from just a wood frame to that steel framing because with the products that are out there on the deck top, you've got those 30, 40 year products still being installed on a eight to 10 year substructure, and that's a problem. And I think yep. that's one of the things yeah. steel is solving. So for those guys that want to move, build better and, and offer better solutions to their customers in terms of steel framing, they're learning here. And like you said, for the steel frame and with the deck fasting that goes on there, they can easily move from what they've already been using, which is the edge clip into that edge X metal clip, same installation process. Like you said, the only learning curve there is it takes a little bit longer to engage with steel. You're of course, you know, tapping that steel for the first time. And so uh, that makes it an easy transition for them to move on. And, and the other parts of our system that make the deck installation easier, like the lever tool, which, which can clamp the boards for them. And then of course the drive and the clip drive tool, which we launched this year, just makes that installation all the easier, gets them up off their knees, makes them up to five times faster with the deck board. So, and, and like you said, it's, a, it's, an easy, it's an easy learning curve from them to go to edge clip to edge X metal, so. So this whole uh, gamut of products that you guys do, that's kind of your wheelhouse. That's the division of the company that you yeah. manage. Right. Is that yeah. Accurate to say? So Somewhere. what is your what does your day to day look like? Like are you guys constantly in the room thinking like how do we how do we beat ourselves? What's the next thing we're doing? With yeah, this? I think um, and James can comment on this too. But from an innovation standpoint, the the first thing we do rather than sit in the room is go to events like this. So this is a mm -hmm. fantastic event to get in front of builders that are actually putting the stuff together, right? Yeah. And so being able to learn because that's where innovation really comes from is what's what are their pair their pain points, what are they trying to get done? What are they what are they suffering through right now that we can make easier for them? And so that's that's the first part of learning what's available um, to us to kind of grow towards. And uh, so I think that's important. And so then we sit in a room and, and, and our engineers can and start to design some prototypes of things that we think will be a solution for those. Um, but yeah, that's where it all begins. It's, it's events like this. Yeah, we learn so much at these events because we're, we like to sit back and go, okay, what's this contractor doing right now, right? And uh, even something as quirky as like, hey, I'm, I'm grabbing this fastener or, uh, you know, this tool from a certain way and he's moving his body a certain way and we're looking at that going, well, okay, well, why are you doing it that way? And is it comfortable? And does that create pain for you? And, 
you know, we just want to problem solve. And so to be invited to these types of innovative meetings to uh, truly just dig in and ask questions on trying to make the contractor's life a little easier, right? And um, I mean, I'd say that's uh, National Nail's strength. You, and, yeah, you learn so much in, in addition to exposing our product to the, to the builders that haven't tried steel framing before. Just the aspects of building steel and what other opportunities are there to make that easier for them. It's all new, right? So you, we're learning while they're learning. And there's other types of fastening that go on with steel, right? And they do it with screws. And so what aren't we taking part in on that type of a build? And, and what other aspects? So deck boards going down, you know, one after the other and with the clip fastener is one aspect of that. But what are they doing in terms of stair treads? And what are they doing in borders and breaker boards? And how are they fastening all aspects of the deck and fascia board? What's the opportunity there? Because, Magnets. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Magnets. That's, the, that's yeah. the opportunity. Exactly, yeah. Magnetic. <laughs> Magnetic holding power could be the Luke. opportunity. James, you mentioned that you guys like yeah. to, to watch and see how a contractor is moving and what he does. Did, have, did you notice a difference from yesterday today to today with how uh, they're moving out yeah, there? Yeah, a little sluggish today. A little, a little sluggish. <laughs> Rotation in the I hips a little bit less. Some liquid courage last <laughs> yeah. night. You know, they're a little yeah. more. Uh, you know, free willing to use some tools with uh, with guards off of them. I saw I <laughs> yeah. saw some tools that uh, had some tape around the triggers and uh, a couple safety guards off and. Uh, but yeah, they're a little sluggish, confident, but sluggish. Yeah, yeah. Better hope it gets done today, because tomorrow, <laughs> no chance. Yeah, no no chance. chance. No chance. Uh, you mentioned clip drive being a new product, but I want to roll back a little bit further because uh, the clip drive is kind of—I don't know if I'd call it a generation two product, but it's kind of—it's not the first one that does what it does. It's yeah. just kind of a an evolution, I guess. Yeah. Um, I've heard the story before because I've I've visited you guys before and I've heard the story about how the camo drive tool came to be, but like maybe others haven't. So why don't you start there with like, how sure. did you guys, because if, if nobody's used this tool before, it doesn't know what we're talking about. This tool allows you to get up off your knees and walk around your deck, dropping the screws down as you go. And the whole system allows you to kind of lay out all your decking before you even worry about putting down one screw, clamp it with a lever and then walk out. It, like it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous mm -hmm. how much more efficient and easier on the body it is. So where did the whole idea for this come from? So the, you, you mentioned second generation. So in, in sorts it is, we, we started with a tool called our drive tool, uh, which also did clips from a standing position. So from that operation, this isn't a whole lot different. We've modified the new tool to be just a clip installation tool. The drive tool uh, incorporated collated fasteners or clip fastening. So you could do really three different types of applications with the drive tool. Um, connects to your own drill and you can do edge fastening which is where camo launched its you know its initial product line was in the edge fastening realm it can also do face fastening so for the guys that are still doing it old school you know and they want to put a bugle head screw down or even a composite screw a color mesh composite screw with composite decking it allow that tool allows them to do that and do it from a standing position so taking that collated aspect of it and a, and a bunch of different types of fastening and putting it into one tool the opportunity, I think, with, with clip drive is something that's really more in tune to the guys that we see here today that are really primarily just doing groove composite or groove PVC types of synthetic boards down, and they're not, they're not doing the face screws, they're not doing maybe some wood installs. They just want to clip fastener. So we were able to bring the price down on the tool itself because it just does clip fastening. Right. So at retail, it's a $50 less expensive tool. So that's a great thing. It still connects to any drill. And then we optimize some of the aspects of that tool just for clip fastening that they're gonna experience. We made the tool longer by about two and a half inches. So it's a little bit more ergonomic and they don't have to stoop at all as they're driving with the tool. His initial uh, height was based off of yeah, so, James height. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, James height, <laughs> five foot one. It was everybody one else was so <laughs> Yeah, the original one came out to my eyeball, <laughs> so I was fine with the height. But yeah. there's a lot of short dudes out there. You could have picked anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah the guys right, right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with a name like the Gunner, you're gonna get some of that. Right? So one of the nice things about that tool is that it'll work for the shorter builder. It's got an adjustable handle on it that they can slide up and down the the actual shaft of the tool, so they can adjust it to their height. And so anywhere from a guy my height, six, almost six six. To a guy at Jane's height, I don't know what, what four that is. Four two, yeah, it was like four foot six. <laughs> we don't want to forget about the little people, and uh, so, um, so yeah, so it's an adjustable tool. It is taller, and uh, but but the handle where you hold the tool is adjustable, so you can adjust that to your height. We also improved the nose of the tool to be a no mar tip. So for yeah. some products, especially working in 
heat like we're going to see today, right. which mm -hmm. Texas is basically, I like to call it hell's front porch <laughs> yeah. in the summertime. And, and sometimes it softens the materials a little bit. So right. anytime you press anything on the surface, yeah. you, you could leave a, a brush mark or a, an indentation. We don't want that happening. So we improve the, uh, the nose of the tool. And aside from that, it's just a fantastic tool for speed of install and ease on the body. Yeah. So it gets the guys really rocking on the deck top. We're going to, I'm sure, get some great video of the deck boards going down later today. For sure, yeah. So. I'm excited to see that start happening. So the, I, the changes you guys made, the two and a half inches longer and the no more tip and everything, was that, did that come from events like this? Were you out there, were you getting that feedback from contractors or were you guys aware that those things yourself were? Yeah, were so initial? obviously we didn't design in a tool that was too short, right, with a drive. We thought... You know, we did the exploration then for the different types of fasting that the drive tool does, which is angled fasting as well as vertical fasting. We feel like we've, we've got the optimal uh, length of that tool. But for guys that are just standing on a vertical deck top with this clip drive, we learned, like you mentioned, um, from hearing feedback from the guys that were using it for this purpose. Yeah, it's, yeah. A little, it's a little short. I'm stooping over a little bit. So I said, you know, it's an opportunity if, for us to improve the God, they the never tool. stop complaining. Those guys. Like, oh, my <laughs> knees. Oh, you have to hurt your knees anymore. Oh, my back. Like, it just doesn't end. Now what, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You, you, you're never perfect, but, uh, you, you know, in the, in the process of trying to be perfect, you, you can launch some pretty good things and helpful things. Yeah, and I think that's really important. I think that's sort of the whole premise of this event, right, is that you're just like everybody here, the intent is to make the industry better. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's so fantastic when you have partners like Camo, National Nail, that like actually listen. Because mm -hmm. some right. people don't, right? They like, you give them the feedback and they're like, yeah, sounds good, yeah. thanks. Yeah. But yeah, we're yeah, doing yeah. this now. Yeah. 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 We sat in our boardroom and we know everything, so we'll just right. launch what we want. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're, you're right, though. I mean, it. these events are very important for things like this. So, I mean, I, I see a change coming. So, I've been a part of Nodra for a very long time. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get seasoned in my career, right? And I see yeah. this new fresh blood of people coming in on the decking industry that are trying to do the things that Nadra was originally uh, set out to do and what I think our foundation National Nail is, which is, you know, really try to help, ask yeah. the questions and, uh, you know, save, save the contractors back, right? Ease their wallet a little bit, save them time and some money. And uh, so I just see this new fresh of blood coming in and events like this where they're taking deck safety to a whole new level, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, wood is dominant. They're trying to uh, increase their game and say, hey, well, how can I provide something different? How can I differentiate from the typical competition in my particular area, right? Yep. By offering something different and out of value to the customer. Yep. And we love to be a part of that. Yeah. You know what I think is really cool about, as you say, this kind of almost new generation of contractors coming up is that these events are starting to happen without some organization. Right. Like this, this is not, this, this happened off of a, you know, <laughs> a social media post, right? Right. Yes. This was just all these contractors being like, let's get together and I like love learn it. together. Right? And then, and then it just like spun out of control. And then the vendors are like, well, shit, we should be there. Like what's going on here? But it's, it's a lot different than Nander saying, here's an official event, come That's right. to it. That's and, right. You know, I so. called Ashley on this one because uh, I started seeing some social media posts. And uh, at that time, it was 12 contractors. He's yeah. like, yeah, come on down. We'd love to have you. And I'm like, okay, I'll bring some tools. We'll figure it out. And then it turned to like, I think, 80 contractors. So yeah, yeah it's yeah, great to wild. see. I was, uh, <laughs> I was up north on a fishing trip uh, away from the world, like no cell service, no nothing for four days. And we were literally in the bush plane flying back out of the bush when my phone connected and all of a sudden, zzz, 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 which I fully expected not to be in four days away. But all these texts start popping up and I'm just kind of glancing as it's coming right. up. And it's like, Texas, Jack, we're doing this, Chet, and Wade, and all these guys. Are, it's all over the place. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, I don't even have the energy to look into what this right. is. Right. So I just left it and then walked into the office on whatever day it was, my first day back, and Wade's like, mm, you're going to want to keep the 27th to 30th open. I was like, uh, yeah, I like, yeah, because it was I like at that point we weren't for sure coming, but it was like here's an opportunity to right. get in front of all these people right. and let everyone tell their story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, was like, so where where can you think of a time? Right, I've been in this industry a lot, so you look at different manufacturers, different industry within building products, right? And I really truly can't think of a situation where you can get direct competitors into a room, yeah. right, that are friendly and co and cordial to each other, learning from each other and trying to elevate the game of decking, you know, uh, throughout the country. 
And so there's a lot of people that actually were not able to attend this show that uh, I think are going to be in this podcast and watch some of the live events because they are truly intrigued on how they elevate their game and differentiate them from the competition by probably adopting steel over wood and, you know, different fasteners and such. And yep. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm glad that we did this. And, um, you know, this is like the first domino, I think, that falls, and it'll be interesting to see how the market shifts. Do you guys, from a National Nails perspective, does it matter to you whether wood or steel, you know, becomes the predominant building material, or does it matter what the split ends up being? If it's 95% wood and 5%, does it matter? I think it, I think it matters to us in terms of we like, you know, our tagline is, is build better, right? And so whether it's building better decks or building better homes or building, putting on better roofs or whatever the, the brand is under our company umbrella, um, we're interested in them building better. And I think it, we're, we're aware of everything and we want to have solutions for everything, but we definitely want to be able to be the go-to to give some advice to say, you know what, we know about this is you should use this product or this, you know, go this direction. I, so I think um, we want to cap, we want to capture all that business, but I think in terms of just helping the guys learn and, and build better products, build better decks or homes or whatever it is, that's what we're really interested in and, uh, and how we get there. So. Yes. Yeah. Greg, why don't you tell them about our, uh, our internal um, search for products with Tevis? Yeah, so we have a, well, it, you know, TVOS is a criteria, right? So it's, a, it's something that anytime we do innovation, we want to run through our TVOS criteria. And, and one is, and that's really experiential for the user. And are we changing the game for the user? And so I talked about building better. Um, but in, in the process of building better, I mean, TVOS is important. So the, the letters in TVOS stand for something, and, and um, T is for time. And so are we making a meaningful difference for them on install time? Because time is money to builders. And time is important even to DIYers and homeowners with products yes. because it's time they could be spending on their deck, enjoying it with their kids and their family and grilling and, and doing whatnot and not installing product you know, or building, building the product. And for the builders, it's important because they can get onto that next, next deck project, do more decks in a year potentially with, with products like these and put more money in their pocket and do better for their families, right? And so time is important. If you're not changing the game on time, you know, you, don't, you, you can't check that box. You might want to think seriously about what you're, what you're launching. And so E is for uh, easy, and that can mean easy on the body. You know, it gets them off their knees standing yep. up. It's easy for them to also to learn. And so is it a, a, a small learning curve? A complicated product for guys like this that have crews out there working is not a good thing. It's got to be easy for them to pull in, show their crews, and they're off and running with it. So, so easy to do and easy to understand is really important as well. So versatility is another important one. And so are you making a product, I'll take the clip as an example, it's a very versatile product in terms, it's a universal fastener. So you can use it virtually with any groove board out there as long as it's a standard type groove, which all the major manufacturers are. And so you've got a product um, that you can take also from a wood frame to a steel frame now, right? Yep. And so it's versatile in frame that you're putting it on, and it's versatile in terms of what type of board you're installing across the board. So you look at things like that in terms of tools or fasteners, making sure you've got some versatility in there. And, and A is for affordability, and that's a pretty easy one because there's always a tipping point on new innovation or technology or the fastener itself. It's got to be affordable. If it's not affordable to and doesn't make sense in the uh, in the build, they're not going to use the product. Doesn't doesn't matter how cool it is, right? So, uh, affordability is important. And the S it, it finally is for strength. And you want to build strength into your product. So whether that's holding power for a fastener um, or durability in a tool, um, those are all important things. And to be able to go through that criteria is super important to us. And you better be able to check most of those boxes if you're launching something that you think is meaningful in the marketplace. Yeah, so. I think if you check all the boxes, then you actually probably have a successful launch. That's yes. right. Right? right. There's you, been times where we've had an innovative product that doesn't meet that criteria and we shelf it. Mm -hmm. yeah, do, you, really? uh, yeah. do you value some of those more than others? Like if, if a product doesn't check, if it only checks four to five, do you go back to the drawing table? Or? Yeah. <laughs> I think you, yeah, so I think you look at it and with that kind of perspective, right, kind of depends on the product itself. And it's not always a bad thing for a company like us to have a Me Too product in the marketplace because it expands our, our breadth of offering, right? Yep. And so just because um, there's other products maybe similar to ours that are already there, sometimes that's okay. But I think in terms of um, when we put resources and marketing and everything behind an innovative and a product launch more specifically, 
that's where I think that TVOS criteria really comes in and you say, you got it, you've got to check those boxes or we're not changing the game out there. We're trying to launch a new product that people don't really want or they don't really need or they're not going to be able to afford it or you know, whatever the reason is. So it depends a little bit on the product in sure. terms of the weight of the criteria. Yeah. Does it make you guys or at least your marketing team giddy when you hear people repeating back those values to you when you oh talk to contractors? Like, what do you like yes. about it? Oh, oh it yeah. saves us time. It's so like, it. yeah, they don't cost it. any more than the other clips. It's easier. And we, you're, you're like, check, check, check. We like, love to develop those raving fans, right? Those are the yeah. guys that talk about how great camo is, you know, and, and, and when we hear from those, those are the guys that really drive the message out there on, you know, Instagram or Facebook or wherever they're talking about it. They stand up for your product, you know, out there. They're showing people how to use it. Like we've got, you know, Scott Kelly here has been, you know, using our product really from the very beginning. And he's, the, they call him the godfather of steel, right? So it's right. a great guy. He's going to be out there fasting with it today. He's been a huge supporter of ours. And, and in talking to his peers, the guys that are here today, what are you using to fasten down boards? They didn't hear it from me. Yeah. They heard it from Scott. And yeah. they know Scott knows his stuff, right? And so that way, the weight of that is so much more than something camo would you know maybe put out on instagram or something that i would talk to somebody certainly about. it yeah. has more value right because sure. when you say it you're advertising you for would yourself. say it yeah I'm, right? trying you would. I'm trying to sell something right yeah or that's the typical that's i know that in our store when that clip drive system came out uh or the the edge clip and then the drive tool came out we were like we saw it, believed in it so much that we started to try and build our own little bundle. It was like, if right. you buy right. this many dollars worth of fasteners, we'll the give you the hands. tool because, like to our contractors, because it was like, it's yeah. fast, you guys. You won't believe how fast it is. Mm -hmm. And so we had one contractor in particular that's a pretty slow adopter of anything new. He was just like, I do, I do it this way. These are the clips I use. I, I like this system. We're fast with it. We're fast with it. And I was like, yeah, but not this fast. Try it. So he buys it goes out, does one job, came back three days later or whatever. It's like, uh, can I do that again two more times? Because I have two more trailers and I want to put those tools yeah. in all my trailers. And it was like, it. yep. We've been trying to switch that guy from, from the clips he was using for five years and couldn't find the product to do it. And then finally yeah. this is it. Which I think is kind of cool because it seems so silly because it's a clip. Usually that's not even really in the purchasing decision for anybody. Right. It's like you choose your board, you find, and then it's like, well, what clip... Do I use oh yeah, I forgot to get a fastener. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Fasteners are funny that way, aren't they? Because you know that it's so true. Um, the homeowner or the end, end customer is choosing the beautiful deck top, right? How the builder gets there is kind of up to them. Yeah, right. Yes. And so the homeowner doesn't care what kind of hidden fastener there is, or or what it looks like, or how easy it goes in. I mean, ultimately they may because it's going to cost them less if it's if the builder's more efficient with it. But from a from a decision standpoint, they're not choosing that. You're exactly right. And yeah. So, so you've got to win the you've got to win the installer on that, win the builder. But even from the contractor's perspective, I don't know that there's been a clip before that had made such an impact that that was part of the contractor's decision as to what boards yeah. they were going to use. Right. Yeah. Because that absolutely happens now. Right. And before it was like, well, I really like X product, so therefore I use their clips. Mm -hmm. Now they're coming in and be like, I love those clips. Who warranties using those clips? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, this brand, this brand sounds good. I'll switch brands then. Right. So and that's like, <laughs> oh. It's crazy, but that's actually happening, right? Mm -hmm. Like your guys' fastener has such a following that people are changing the board they install yes. to work with the fastener. It's right. like, that's like that's how good it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do see that happen. Um, the, one of the other, you kind of touched on it a little bit before, but one of the other tools that you guys offer that allows this entire system to be so efficient is the camel lever tool. Is it lever or lever? Lever. Is what it's lever. You, lever. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's also a roof and is a roof. Is it GIF or GIF? So. I think so, yeah. soap is lever. And it's the it. first uh, <laughs> board stretcher ever invented. <laughs> yeah. So the camel lever tool, and i got to change a lot about how oh, I do boy. Yeah. things. <laughs> the lever's awesome. Composite deck boards with the camel lever tool. <laughs> this Canadian thing is hard, Greg. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Oh, it's like a whole new world down here. Yeah, These words. Is. Yeah. You wait until you try and travel from Canada. <laughs> yeah. um, so tell us a bit about that. How did you come up with that? Because it's, that's what it does is was not a new thing. There was there was board vendors, vendors yeah. or whatever, yeah. spreader bars that people are using. So yeah. why did you Actually, even think the need to Yeah, so it? the lever, what an awesome tool. And it, and it does a couple of different things. And, and I, we can talk about how it helps with the clip. And I think it's indispensable with clip installs. But just going back to the beginning of where the lever started was as a board bending tool back in the, you know, probably 10 years ago in our engineering department and working with wood material, especially when they're doing edge fasting, you never, you never get it treated 
deck board that's straight, right? Well, so at the ultimate deck shop, you can, <laughs> but it's all we sorry. carry. Actually, so we carry is perfectly straight, <laughs> and they're all treated lover. one foot long, so they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> all the crooked ones go somewhere else. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so anyway, the, the experience of working with treated. Obviously, like you said, there's other board benders out there that that guys have have been using. So uh, just in designing a board bender, uh, Roger Vandenberg, who who is our lead engineer, you know, developed a tool that could work in a more compact way, work using the the joists, and stay out of the the way of what you're doing on the deck top. So a lot of board benders would come over top of the deck board, and if you're trying to do fastening on that joist position, you know, it gets in the way of of what you're trying to do. So the lever works off uh, the joist itself, pushing against the side of the deck board and anything you're doing on top of the deck board or at the joist is uninterrupted. And so from a, from a board bending aspect, that's kind of where it began. And, but we didn't see a whole lot of value in it for the time. Maybe we were just kind of blind to it, but, and, or just busy with other product launches. And so it really wasn't until we developed this clip, the way the clip can stand in position without any fastening and you can set up row after row of boards to do the install we said, wait a minute. So somebody's got to eventually hold those boards in position to do that fastening, right? And we said, what if we what if we use the lever for that? Um, it wasn't called the lever at the time, but that came later. It's called anyway. the lever then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, lever right, the lever. Yeah. Or the heel of your or boot. That really yeah. cool <laughs> clampy thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we, you missed an opportunity with Clampy uh, Thing. <laughs> Clampy yeah. Thing was on the, the board for a while. <laughs> it was taken. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And so that really spurred the conversation internally about how do we how do we keep the guys that are having to hold that deck board or the person that's doing an install by himself make that easier for him. Hey, they can clamp those boards into position. The boards are spaced by the clip, so they just tighten the boards up with the with the lever. And then they can go back where they're working by themselves or if they're working with a crew, the crew can be carrying boards or cutting boards or doing other things on the deck top. And one, and one guy can be fastening all the decking because you just freed up, you know, a pair of hands uh, with the lever. And so not only does it do a great job of board bending for guys that are using those wood products, whether it's treated or epay or whatever, and you're trying to get the board in position and, and be able to fasten it in the right spot, or if you're using our clip system and you want to lock those boards together, it's a it's a multi-purpose tool and and you know one one turn to perfect fasting something like that so we uh we have just had great success and and the market's been super kind to us with that tool as they've really adopted that we're just you know making hey they love that tool i think one of the things too was that your tool was more universal as to what it could grab in the first place it wasn't just single joist applications like it'll work i don't know if this is if the steel framing was in even part of your decision-making process there that it's got to be able to do two inches, but it also will do a double joist, right? Double joist, yeah. And so that is a shortcoming of some of the other <clears throat> tools out there yes, that they can right. grab one joist, and it's like, yeah. well, great, but the way people are building decks nowadays with with the double rims or, or different seam board and board applications, you have lumber tighter together, and you need to be able to grab. Yeah, great point. I think in terms of if we had launched that eight, ten years ago, we probably wouldn't have thought of some of those things that we incorporated yeah. into the tool now, and, and steel framing was not a thing yet, you know, ten years ago. And so when we were building the final designs on that tool, you know, we did accommodate steel framing. We did accommodate double joists because those, those things exist on the deck, and we thought about those things ahead of time. So, yeah, that's an excellent point. You guys uh, mentioned earlier the, the stainless steel lineup that you've kind of, um, I don't know what the right word is, but kind of have a, a new approach or a... Yeah, so I think, yeah, the, exciting for us, one of, the, one of our launches this year, aside from the clip drive tool, was our new uh, a, kind of a relaunch, but a real expansion of our business in stainless steel. And so there's a tremendous amount of opportunity on the coast, of course, for using the right type of stainless steel. And, and, and a lot of people aren't even aware that there's different alloys in stainless steel. They think, oh, it's stainless steel, I can use this here. But marine grade versus your standard 305 stainless steel versus your 410, you know, which can be heat treated and hardened type of stainless steel. There's big differences. There's differences in corrosion resistance between those. And so we, we started down this path of we want to grow our stainless business. We think there's a lot of messaging that doesn't happen in the field that we can help lead the way on in, in terms of building better and using the right products in, in, the, in the field. So if you're building on the coast, don't use a 305 screw, use a 316. Um, and, and with fasteners in general, people like to, like to cut the corners on where they can save, save money. 
And, and deck building is one of those places where you can build a, you know, have people building 20, 30, 40 thousand dollar decks and beyond, but they want to save a hundred dollars and use a, a lesser <laughs> fastener, and it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, isn't but that the craziest thing? It's right? the craziest. You thing. You end up in an argument with somebody about the fastener they're going to use, and it's yeah. just like, what are we? What are you doing? Yeah. How yeah, is this? This the is one? literally holding your deck together. It's right. you're holding your forty grand together <laughs> here. Maybe you spend the extra fifty bucks on fasteners. That might be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. anyway, so yeah, so what we wanted to do is is improve our offering. So we've expanded our line in the in terms of camo, uh, we've expanded our size offering and in terms of some different alloys that we offer. So three oh five and three sixteen and the full gamut, really with a focus on deck fastening or any exterior project fastening in that. At the same time, we relaunched uh, on the national nail side, the ProFit side, we relaunched our stainless offering there with with new breadth of line as well and new alloys. So for coll collated uh, uh, nails and hand drive nails, as well as the camo screws, it's just been a company wide expansion of that program. So we're excited. We've got new messaging on the. So we talked about messaging. And in delivering that build better message, we've got that on the packaging. So we, at the same time, we repackaged everything. So we've got some really super cool packaging that really pops on the shelf for the dealers and attracts attention. And at the same time, delivers that build better message. So make sure they're buying the right fastener for the application. That's cool that you guys are always looking to improve upon something that probably the average person didn't think needed improving on. Right. I mean, that could even apply to the camo edge clip, to be honest. Nobody, nobody was... Like they might have been complaining, but nobody was like, somebody should do a better clip. They was just like, it, it was what it was. They were just saying, this is a pain in the butt. Right. Yeah. But for you to even go <laughs> after like sense. your stainless steel line and be like, this needs some attention now too. Yeah. There's a quote out there that I really like about, uh, it's better for you to put yourself out of business and let somebody else do it for you. <laughs> and you guys seem to really have that thing where it's like, hey, we, we have this product, but we're okay with cannibalizing that or letting that go away and release something that's just a little bit better right. sure. before somebody Absolutely. else does. Absolutely. You, you guys know firsthand that somebody might just decide to do it a little bit better because yeah. that's what you've done for a lot of years, right? So it's yeah. cool to have that attitude. Absolutely. And you see that happening. Go ahead, Wayne. Sorry. So do you think that the reason you guys have taken a uh, run at the stainless steel industry now or with your own product is that the market's prime for that? Like, do you see a bunch of contractors that are ready? You know what I mean? Like, they're yeah. ready to build that's better a great question. themselves. So, I mean, I think we've already talked about the innovation of our clip drive and our edge screws and uh, our edge clips, right? And so what we found is, is we've got a really good following on the professional level. Yep. But what we've also found ourselves with is that there's some stickiness still in how those contractors can buy our stuff. Got you. You know, I just got a post the other day, a guy in Alaska, hey, I saw your stuff, where can I buy it? Well, I got to figure out a way to make that happen. And so during this journey where we're going into dealers, right? Yep. saying, hey, there's a contractor base that really wants this product. Yeah. Um, what we're finding is, is that there's also other opportunities. Yep. So stainless steels being one of those. So um, there are some parts of the country that are very educated on what grade stainless to use where. Yep. But when we go to the dealer and we talk to the average contractor and they're building a deck around a saltwater pool and they didn't think about using any stainless steel. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm or where there's a lot of snow and they put salt on their deck, they didn't think about using a stainless steel fastener. And so I, there's a great opportunity for us to not only increase some shelf space at the dealer on a product that maybe they were in kind of with a couple of different vendors, yep. and now we're giving them innovation, and we're yep. saying, oh, by the way, let us help you out on your stainless steel. Yeah, and I think that's important when you go to dealers and you, and you take that information and support them because, so like, with our location, there, there's a million SKUs, not a million, it's like 3,748 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there's a lot of SKUs and every single vendor has a reason that that SKU should be there, right? And sometimes what happens is you forget about a product line or you, or you don't know how important it is, right? And so to have you guys show up and be like, listen, you have people asking for this product, That's you right. need to change your shelf space, you need to Mm -hmm. change your offering it's like right yeah we should do that you know so it's good to show up and, and support the dealers so. yeah absolutely. i would go and one thing just beyond what james said too is it, we talk a lot about environmental conditions for proper fasteners and there's material conditions for proper fasteners too so different fasteners give you different performance attributes right so if you're using a carbon screw that's coated for one environment you know stainless steel may be in a better for that coastal environment but if you're using uh, a deck product like a PVC product that you know has more linear expansion yeah. and contraction, 
you want a screw that maybe allows for that a and has softer. a little more ductility. And yeah. so stainless steel, like it just as an exact example, stainless steel has always been the best practice with PVC because of that movement in the board. If you're using a carbon screw, whether it's a composite or an edge screw or a face screw, whatever it is, and you have a lot of linear movement, you're putting a lot of pr more pressure on those fasteners and they don't like to move. Yeah. And so using stainless in that kind of condition is, is way better. So it's, it's things like that as well. And those types of messages are even harder to get to the end user. They don't understand that and they need to be helped along with that. So they, we try to educate a little bit in yeah. terms of that as well. It sounds like you guys think that we should carry 3,754 SKUs. <laughs> so you've looked at bringing out your new structural yeah, fastener yeah, right. line. 39. 30, 39. 39. Yeah. Okay. Got to so, put a niner in there. <laughs> you guys haven't really played a whole lot in that space before, but now right. what do you have coming that's We've that's had a small, a very small structural offering in terms of camo in, yeah. in the past. And one of the things I think we were sitting out was the needs on the structural side. And so that became really evident to us a few years ago. So the last two years or so, we've been working really hard on a, on a really full comprehensive structural line that covers. And, it, and it's also one of the, th maybe one of the faults of camo, but one of the things we focused on in the beginning was really deck top fastening. And so one of the things we kind of sat out was, what, what are they doing under the deck? What are they doing for these other exterior applications? What are they doing inside the house that those fasteners carry over to? So I think the new thing for us this year in terms of that structural offering is, first of all, um, that breadth of structural offering from deck top to house with all the different applications that use structural in, we're expanding camo. So we're getting off the deck top, we're getting under the deck, we're getting into the house in terms of structural. Um, a, a new coating process, so we're going to have a fantastic uh, coating on our screw for those exterior projects, so something better than anybody's seen before is, is going to be awesome. And um, yeah, so I think that is, that's, that's a big push for us, that's what we're working on. Everything being coat approved is a big undertaking. So you go through the design process of the fastener and the coating design, and then you say, all right, and so to be coat approved, we've got to go through all this testing, and then you've got to go through the uh, certification of that testing uh, for coat approval. So that's been a, it takes a long time. It's been a journey you for bet. us, but uh, we're going to be bringing that to market this year. So we're super excited about what awesome. we've got coming on that end. Yeah, yeah it'll good. be interesting to see what you guys uh, come forward with. Is like, we nerd out on, on structural fasteners but the average homeowner it's another thing that they don't think anything about it's like here's what you're going to use and then they end up returning and be like what did you do why didn't you use those right, right. Um, so we've talked a lot about new products in the last years but the one that you guys kind of built the camel brand on was the old marksman tool and the protect screws or the stainless screws for that tool where's like that's still kicking yeah and so what's yeah. is there a future for that thing or is so, it slowly kind of there's absolutely a future for that we sell you know our marksman pro series line so it's it's a few tools it's the marksman pro the pro x1 and the nv tool uh, we sell those all over the world and we do hundreds of thousands of those tools every year still to this day and so that is still a very much a go-to tool for uh, the pro builders that are out there doing different products uh, and the DIYers where it's, an, it's a really inexpensive tool to get into to do their deck project and deliver that hidden fastening uh, that, they, that they really want to keep the beauty of the deck intact. Yeah. And so it's absolutely, so yeah, we are, uh, we are still pushing forward with that product line. Uh, edge fastening is still a thing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's so. incredible how many people don't know about that tool, but then right. when you show them, like we have right. average DIY customers that come in and they think they're just gonna face mm -hmm. screw a tree to deck down. It's like, well, have you looked at this? And so we did a display in our showroom where we've used that edge fastening system, the marksman tool to do it. And people will walk up and be like, well, that's incredible. Like, yeah, I'll do that. Because then it just reduces the slivers. It's just one more pain point that you reduce, right? Yeah. So like slivers on your face. It's one of those things where you can show them and say, you can show them the old, old school way and you can show them the edge fastening way and you say, why would you, why would you do it any other way? Yeah. Yes, right? And so it's a, it makes the decision very easy for them. And it's, you're right, it's still amazing. We do shows still to this day, 11 years after launching that product, where you still have people that come up and haven't used the tool. Haven't, yeah. they don't know never it seen it. Never, never seen heard of it, it, right? They think yeah. you just, just wood, it right? I mean, let's not forget wood's still the dominant uh, board out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah, right? That's easy to forget sometimes. I, I know, like, Gord Woodbully posted, uh, it's probably six months ago now, using the camo marksman tool on a cedar deck. And for me, scrolling, it was like, well, yeah. And, but the comment section was just like, oh, my God, where did you get that? I just did my deck. Why didn't I know such things? Yeah. It's like, the world doesn't really know about it, though. And that's been out for how long? 11 years. 11 years, 11 years you said? Yeah. So, like, that's pretty cool that it still has, it can still wow people, even though it's an old right. innovation. That 
Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I think it speaks to you have, first of all, you got a lot of homeowners that are seeking out for the first time they're going to do a deck, right? And they're further, so they're seeking out what fastening system to use for the first time, and they're being exposed to that. And you also have, I think, a good thing you have new builders coming into the industry. And, yep. and learning about these things uh, for the first time as well. So that plays a part. And the other thing is there's just so many. There's so much opportunity out there. And there's yeah. so many decks being built. I mean, some, somewhere in just the U.S., I think it's somewhere around 5 million decks a year are built. And so there's just tremendous opportunity. It continues to be every year yeah. with this product. It's a, great, it's a great industry to be in. So. Yeah. That's really cool. Could you imagine if you could sell all the screws for those? Yeah, right? Exactly. Like five million. <laughs> we're working on well, it. Well, wait yeah. a second. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anything else that you guys want to chat about? Uh, like, I know you're excited to go out and see the guys starting to put your decking down with your clips and stuff here too, but any other products or news or camo things and tidbits you want to share with everybody out there? I, I mean, think, you know, we're always... We're, there's we, 65 we, million people that listen yeah. to this, so here's your chance. Shoot your shot. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I know it audience. seems unbelievable, no but I'll show you the spreadsheet. It's unreal. <laughs> got great traction. Uh, better than I do, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've, we've got a couple other new things that we're working on that were probably three or four things that we're not ready to talk about yet. Come but, on. You know, we keep pushing forward. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, as soon as you open that can of worms, everybody wants to know when it's going to be here and what it is. And yeah. so, you know, we, we've got to keep some things. But, we, you know, the important thing is we're always listening and we're always developing. And we've always got a lot of innovation in the hopper that we're working on. And so we just look forward to some more good yeah. things from right. us in the future. Yeah. I, I'll share one little nugget. How about that? Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So th this, this, will, a go, great this will go spot. good for you guys. So, <laughs> okay. you know, we talk, you make we talk friends, about this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> We talk about the on? stickiness, right? So we've got this contractor fan, uh, fan base, right? And they want access to our products. And we're yeah. learning that, oh, well, maybe it's okay for us to kind of get into what we would deem as a Me Too business with stainless steel and structural. But what we found is that they're still, uh, just like our innovation with our clip drive and our, um, and our uh, drive tools and our, and our clips, that there's, a, there's, a, there's some learning that still needs to go on there. Yeah. And I've often found that the easiest way to sell that is to demo it. You mentioned yes. that with edge screws, right? Yeah. So we, when we're looking at this, we're going, okay, well, how can we partner with the right dealer? Yeah. Right? To show and tell our story, to tell your story, right? right? And to share it with the contractor. So uh, in the fall, we'll be launching for a select few dealers across the country and Canada um, a merchandising update opportunity. Okay. So, you know, how many times you go into a dealer and you see the almond shelves that have been there for 25 years with, yep. you know, a lot of dust. So yep. we're coming up with an, uh, a new planogram okay. offering um, a complete fastening solution for stainless, structural. Uh, if you're fastening decks with wood, a planogram for that. If you're fastening decks with composite, a planogram for that. And I think that it would be a great partnership to uh, launch it with just a few select partners across the United States. You'll be happy to know that our almond shelves are only six and a half years old. So. Is, that, <laughs> yeah. is that all? Yeah. Well, they're fairly new. So. They, and they're, they're gray. They're not even almond. Yeah. So there. <laughs> gray looks a lot better than almond. Yeah, absolutely. Does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's good. And that, like, that's so important, right? right? Like you say, to partner with people and just make that. Yeah, we're looking forward to that relationship this, better. It is. Like, with, with, with this industry, you, you have to be partners the whole way through, right? Like, you got to have a good relationship and, and think about the dealer because they're in the middle. Like, it's got to make sense for them, too. And then down to the contractor, of course, it needs to make sense. But, yeah. Yeah, um, and if you're, getting the, if you're getting the pull through from your contractor, they're telling you what they want, then it's your, not job, but it's like, it's good if you guys would then get to the dealer level and be like, listen, these guys are asking for it. Because sometimes dealers are, they're tough to sell to, right? That's right. So I already have a lot of inventory and I already have my showroom full. What are we going to, you're going to take all this away? It's like, well, yeah, or blow it out and we'll help you with that. But it's like, you have to change something. That's right. Yeah. Do you guys have, given that you're so open to, to feedback from contractors, do you guys have an avenue for them to provide feedback if some guys... Like, not that you want to listen to every guy complaining. Yeah, yeah. What's your things, Instagram handle so they can message you all the time? But well, we were thinking that you could you just deal with the questions and bring them to us. We'll filter it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll good. filter them. Yeah, <laughs> you bet. Yeah. But, if, but serious question, is there, is there, like, does somebody go to your website and just be like, fill out the form and submit ideas? Do you take that kind of feedback from people? Yes, absolutely. So we, have a, we do have a presence, not anywhere near what your presence is online, it sounds like, or on uh, YouTube. Yeah, I just found out how big it is, too. So, so uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't know it was that. We far. have, you know, we have our YouTube channel where we have just tons of videos for to help people with the installations and learn about products. We have, you know, Instagram and a Facebook, of course, to our social media, and we uh, we love to collaborate with builders that are out there using our products and co-promote. And so we we get a lot of feedback through those avenues as well. And 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 more importantly, I think being at events like this, doing the shows, investing in the shows where a lot of companies don't want to make the investment, don't know if it's important or not. But it's just really indispensable, you know, the information and the feedback you get from builders um, in this type of avenue as well. So this one's huge, right? Because you're actually face to face with the guys, yeah, and they will sure. tell you. Uh, yeah, it's oh, yeah. the right sixty of it's these the right guys 80 out guys. here. Yeah. They're not going to send you an email. Yeah, the sure. contractors yeah. that are here are not going to fill out a form. Yeah, and but, these guys are, are guys that care about the craft, and they work. They care about the the five values that you guys have. They're looking for something more efficient and right. more you know, right. better time. Yeah, and, and they care about their business yeah. because they've spent some money to get here. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah. 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 Pretty, yeah, pretty good audience. Right, absolutely. Okay, well, this room is getting like pretty Ooh. filthy in here. I yeah, can smell all sure. of you at this point. <laughs> so, I want to thank you guys for carving out some time because yeah. I know there's thanks a lot of action us. happening on the other side of that door. So, we'll let you get back to that. But thanks for joining us and providing us all the insight. And yeah. thanks for the, the a special little tip there that Greg wasn't willing to give us. So, uh, we'll <laughs> secret buy Greg you a beer later. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks for joining. If anybody has any questions for these gentlemen or for Camo feedback in general, sounds like follow you guys on your social profiles and they're always willing to listen. Feed them so. through us because apparently that's. Part That's of, right. We'll right? be your filter. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Let's you. get out of your brace. We got stuff to do. Hit it. Hey, thank you for listening to the ultimate deck podcast. Now you know what we're about. Check the site. Come and shop. UltimateDeckShop.com. Hit us right away for sponsorships. So tell us if you want to collaborate. Let's go.